Rawls. Mm -hmm. Just call me Lee. Lou Rawls said to Lee one day, I thought your name was Lee. Why are they calling you Robert? Well, see, that goes back to people that knew me from Arkansas. They want to continue to call you Robert. And things like when I did. When you were born, you're Robert Lee Kennedy. That's my name. But you wanted to go by Lee after No, a I didn't just want to go by Lee. I said when I came here, I was working at a Joe Cow department store. Oh, you're right. You're right. And it would say that say that story for the people watching. Yeah, well, I'm gonna say it again. You know, but, yeah. Uh, and and uh, we had a PA system. My job was maintainers. What you I did the floors. Yeah. Uh, did the layaways. Yeah. When they needed a layaway, it was in the basement. They would call me on a PA system because I might be up front. I might be doing anything up front. And I had to go back to the back desk to pick up the car to go get the layaway from. When they called me Robert, my manager name was Robert. But everybody called him Bob. But he still responded, you know, it's automatically. Just by habit, because that's, that's also his name. And so Robert. when they called me, we both responded. Yeah. So when an employee there, she said, we got to do something about this. So what's your... We call you Lee. You just okay? Can we call, we want to call you something else. I said, yeah, that's my middle name. That is my name, Lee, Robert Lee. Right. And then people, when I named the store, when I was down there, everybody called me Lee. What's your name? Because I'm in a new city, a new state and everything. So I introduced myself, Lee Kennedy. But people from down south that I know and relatives, they say I've been calling you Robert all this time. That's all I know is Robert. But that's that's not right. Right. Because you, you get another phone number, you don't forget to, I move into another address, you don't forget to tell them about your old address. And people play game. And I and it, it used, then it started irritating me. Yeah. You know? And so so when I'm around, one day Lou and I was together, somebody called me Robert. Lou Rawls, yeah. And, um, I don't know how it came up, but anyway, he asked me why they call you Robert. Now, maybe somebody came by. I don't know what happened, but yeah. he said, "Why did I thought your name was Lee?" I said, "It is," and I explained why. And so every time if someone called me, then you got to explain why. And I just went by Lee, and I don't have to explain why. Yeah, I did what I'm going to Yeah. And so I think that people should still give you respect. Yeah. But they don't. But uh, on top of that, uh, um, yeah, people should be more respectful to you. But but this story also shows you're the, the you're the consummate cool cat. Truly, uh, you're so laid back. You, you don't even think twice about it uh, when at work. They're like, hey, can we call you by a totally different name? Okay, you you, you are that um, easy to work with, that agreeable. No 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 no. If when you meet somebody, a lot of people say my name is so and so. You can call me Pete. Right. My friend called me Pete. Right. There's all kind of ways you can do it. Yeah. But sometimes people want to be diverse or whatever. Different, yeah. And they said hurtful thing to you about that. You're trying to be a, all that kind of stuff. It's not that. It's yeah. about. And so that irritates me. Yeah. It irritates me when people do that, you know? Yeah. And uh, I'm just saying, so. Well, well speak, speaking of uh, back in the day and hurtful things, um, uh, an old saying that you grew up with, if you play with kids, the kids will sass you out. If you play with trash, it will get in your eyes. Therefore, do not play with children or with trash. <laughs> Almost like uh, if you fight right. with a pig, you're going to get dirty. Well, matter, matter of fact, uh, this day and age, time, yeah. education, books, and television, you should respect other people regardless. Amen. That's all. It's about respect, man. That's all it is. And knowledge me. Amen. If you don't respect me, I don't deal with you, and it's not have to. Amen. It's simple as that. Yeah. I don't have to deal, you know. You're not the, you know. Yeah, you, you've lived enough of a life. You know what works, what, what doesn't. You know what you want. Well, uh, I'm just saying that I know what I want, and I don't go in the crowd if you don't disrespect me. Amen. Uh, um, you, you, we were talking on the phone the other day, and you told me, 
that, that you're a West Side guy and that when you came to Detroit, you thought that East Siders were low class. Uh, the West Side of Detroit today has more crime than the East Side. And, and I was going to say, a homeless guy, because uh, I do street photography here in the city, I'm the, I, I've taken more pictures of, of Detroit than anybody, perhaps. Uh, one time a homeless guy told me that he had to fake his accent, uh, you know, his West Side of Detroit accent to sound like the East Side just to be able to get work here in Detroit. Like people, like I'm saying in the, in the 60s, did, did, did you ever hear about that? Because I've heard about no, that before. No, See, like I said before? Yeah. I hung out around, I was downtown. Yeah. And when I was out, I was out doing business work, and I wasn't with that crowd of people. That, I told you that. Yeah. You know, so I, it's a different kind of people. Who you hang with, you're surrounding, you usually with the surrounding you be with. Well, speak, speaking of that, uh, and I think I know your answer now then, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you ever hear that saying, he stole ten dollars, still in jail. He stole a million, out on bail. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, the, the, you know, certain people always get away with crime. Did you ever see small-time criminals get nabbed while big-time criminals got off in, in Detroit? Did you ever see like? Uh, I see it everywhere. I don't see it. I read about it. I see yeah. it on television. It's everywhere. You know, it's. Uh, I know how they go. You know, education. If you don't know how to do anything. You just have to have anything done to you. Yeah. You got to know when to not to. Uh, you dig when sometimes people tell on themselves. They, they, you need a lawyer. You don't have a lawyer. You could have. It's a lot of things go along with that. So I don't get into that because I don't deal with those kind of people. Right. You dig. Uh, um, were there a lot of hills in Arkansas that sort of made you into a billy goat of a climber, or, or was it pretty flat where you lived, like plains, or, or was it hills or plains in El Dorado? Right. Well, they, well, they didn't have, we always got hills. <laughs> Up here, down here, you always got hills everywhere. So, so it was. And that's it was, the way the world is. The hills, because the water, you know, sink. Sometimes you live in the valley. Sometimes you live by the sea. If you're in the valley, you step half slope. You know, that's life. Yeah. That's very profound. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're, you're very, you're a good speaker. Um, <laughs> this is silly. Lee is so tough, the only time he ever had a black eye was on his knuckles. <laughs> How many fights did you get into throughout your whole life? And did you fight most as a youth in Arkansas, or did your various firearms keep you from resorting to fisticuffs? Never had a fight in my life. The only wow. fight I ever had was my brother, or my sister, or my cousin, because we was kids. Yeah. Never had a fight with nobody. I don't fight, man. I well, fight. Yeah. I pay taxes. Police fight for me. <laughs> Amen. That's true. What are some things that make you so doggone mad, Lee? Wannabes. People know and don't know. I don't deal with them. So that's why I'm going. You know, you know, but what have you done? You know all about everything, but what have you done? You know how to play baseball? You can know what it should have, could have. And you haven't done, and that's where you are. That pisses me off. So I don't like to talk with people like that. You understand? Yeah. Because I don't care what you say, you shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah. And that's why it came out. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Do it. Don't I talk about it. it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Art Blakey hit those drums like he was using half a barrel of buckshoot. You ever see Art Blakey in person? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I would hang with that group when they would come in town at the time. That's. That's how I got to meet Freddie Herbert in the beginning. Through Art Blakey. Because he was with the Art Blakey group. Yeah. Uh, him and Wayne Shorter. Wow. And uh, I think Reggie Workman was who, a bass player. I forget who the bass player was. Yeah. But, but anyway, yeah, Curtis Fuller played with Blakey. They had a thing called Three Blind Mice. See how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife. Cut off the tail with the carpet knife. Do you ever see such a sight in your life as Three Blind Mice? Man, that was bad. <sighs> yeah, I blame, yeah. Yeah, Three Blind Mice. Now here's a question I've never asked before, and I could ask it about a million artists, but I'll, I'll do Art Blakey and Paul Humphrey, both drummers. You, did you ever see two of your drummer pals, or two, you know, two of the same instrument instrument players at the, you know, 
they might be playing different shows but they're both in Detroit at the same time or no no it wasn't no club big enough to do that <laughs> <laughs> good to I didn't know that I'm glad I asked see the clubs in Detroit how many was it one or two uh the 20 grand what well, that Baker's keyboard lounge been a, that didn't go, oh, I'm sorry let me, let me just go hit the little button sorry let me hit the button Three blind mice, see how they run, see how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife, cut off the tail with the carbon knife. You ever see such a sign your life as three blind mice? Man, that was so bad. <laughs> That's crazy to think about mm -hmm. that back in the day, there was no club big enough right. i mean there, there weren't, weren't enough clubs for that matter in detroit to have two significant out-of-town artists particularly it black artists enough. it wasn't big enough black See, or white any artist or just well, talking well, in well, terms well, of black people white, or any artist well white people see they was always they like probably be at ballroom over here with Johnson playing them go, you know. The Grandy Ballroom. Thing like that. Black, I don't know what the black was doing. You know, there's always more blacks, more whites there. That's what I'm trying to say. Demographics. Just more, 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 more bodies. Look, yeah. look, 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 look at uh, 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 Taylor Swift. Came oh, my word. Club. That's what I'm trying to say, man. What? Now, I, I don't, look at it. If you gave me a million dollars. <laughs> I can only tell you one thing she did, and I probably couldn't tell you the name of the song was then. It's called Shake It Off. Shake, shake. shake It Off, I think. I don't listen to her music either, so I don't know her music. But that's what I'm saying. But look, people, there's more people like Taylor Swift than there is Aretha Franklin. And I said it before that Aretha Franklin haven't been to Ford Auditorium. My friend told me she was. She's been there. Yeah. But I don't think she, uh, and, and you told me that she came there to sit in, right? Yeah, uh, it, yes, sir. Yes, sir. She never been there as a as, as a featured like a that's what I'm talking about. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Headline. Yeah. And you know what I just heard about uh, Taylor Swift? I want to do a low number. I think it was seven hundred million, but let's just say five hundred million. This is million good enough for me. That she's gonna make off of this tour alone. But I know, half a look, billion dollars. But look how many chains she go to, man. She going out. She always. Go, that's what. That's that's why we talking. Yeah. That's what we're talking. Yeah. And I said it again, like, uh, 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 Kenny G was, is a millionaire living out in Healing, California. And I got into a thing with a friend of mine. He's not talking to me now about that because we talked wow. about that. Yeah. And he says, he was talking about who's good compared to what? Compared yeah. to who? Yeah. I don't know no jazz musician that's a millionaire. Black. Or regardless. Well, 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 when you talking about jazz, I'm talking about black people. I don't yeah. know about white. For back in the day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, now it's a different thing, but still I don't know. It's in the mainstream like more said, now. Like than I than said, I know, I know, I know, I saw myself that Kenny G is a millionaire and that's good enough for me. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I flatter myself if I think being poor is the only thing holding me back in life. Did anything hold you back in life, Lee? Yeah, a lot of things. Well, we don't have to go on a lot of things here to me back in life. You know, I want to bend this. I want to, we got to take me to get from where I was. <laughs> so, you know, we forget that. Yeah. Where where, where do you begin? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Right. There you go. Ah!